Hello, welcome to part 6 of this Let's Build ASP.NET MVC project. This is the final whistle um, website and we are currently in a position where we are going to do a list of all of the teams. We've, just, we've done the latest match, we have, uh, we've done match reports and we've done the uh, individual match report page itself. Um, so we, we've got like a full sort of article system going on here um, that just needs a little bit of tidying up I guess with CSS but it is what it is um, so now what we're going to do is um, if we go back to github and see the list of stuff we are on to doing cool stuff with the data so we're not going to enter any more information we're just going to do stuff that um, we've actually already entered into the database um, so what we are going to do is we're going to add a team page with all of their match results and then that will have links to the match report pages um, we're going to add a team versus team history page, so Arsenal versus Spurs, um, with all the matches between those teams, and there again we'll have clickable links to each match report. And I think I'm going to leave it there for this video, the next video will be this one here where we automatically generate a league table, because I think that's going to take a little bit longer than I thought it would, um, but we'll, we'll do it as a whole separate video. If nothing else, it gives you something else to watch. So let's uh, let's crack on. So the first thing really that we need to do is we need to create this page here um, for all teams because right now it's just right redirecting to the home page because we haven't actually created the route so what we need to do is um, again following on to the previous video we should actually have had um, in the teams view we should actually have called the index we should call that list because that's actually the uh, the admin the admin thing and it's kind of standard in MVC um, especially if you're using the uh, the automatic scaffolding stuff where the the system builds the pages for you they normally have the the page for listing all of the um, different teams in the admin that's normally called list um, but we've called it index which is normally the front end one but we'll just we'll do what we did in the match reports and we'll just create a new page called all which will be our um, page that gets referenced from uh, this link and we'll just put a we'll just put a link in there um, to basically say all teams like we just like we did with that one we've called that all reports if you look at the bottom left we'll call this all teams so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, make sure that's not running which it is not which is good news we're going to go to our root config and app start and we're just going to copy and paste this root there we are and we'll just put a custom root for all teams we call it all teams and that's going to take us to controller of teams and the action of all so what we need to do now is we need to go to our front end layout and we're going to make that point to that controller uh, route to that route sorry all teams um, so now we need to go into the teams controller and we need to this is what we did in the match reports we just created one called all there which was uh, we'll, co we'll copy and paste that as well um, so copy that from the match reports, paste it into Teams. So now we have a matching URL, and all we need to do now is change everything that references match report to uh, to Teams. So Team repository is it Teams repository? Yep, Teams repository, and Teams rep is what we'll call it. And we'll just change every instance of that. Uh, my Teams. Uh, my Teams. Just bear with me while I do this. We need to reference the correct thing for get all teams. And we want to order by descending. We'll order it, uh, we're actually going to order it A to Z. Um, so it won't be descending, it'll just be order by. Oops. Dot order by. And we'll order it by name. Name. Or team name, sorry. So now we have that controller set up. So we're communicating with our teams repository, with our database. We're calling this function get all teams, storing it in that variable there called my teams. If we do have some teams, if the the count is greater than zero, we just set up view data teams as the list of teams ordered by the team name. So it'll come back alphabetically for us. So remember that view data teams. So all we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to match reports and we'll just copy and paste the all into teams as well and we'll just open that up and we will uh, we'll change this so we'll just say all teams and it'll just be for each team team t and all we need is the uh, the team name Team name. Let's 
So we'll only have one column this time. And we'll just say there are no teams. So basically all we've done there is we've uh, oops, we've just created oops. Bear with me. You get a bit closer to the screen. So basically all we've done there, yeah, we've we um if the uh, the view data of teams is not empty, then we just write out this table which is a list of teams and we'll have a link to a team view page. So we'll just run that uh, script now, just press F5 or press debug and uh, start debugging. That'll spin it up, build succeeded, we're ready. We can just refresh this page and we should now have a navigation item when it reloads. Just give it a second to spin up. <coughs> so now we should have this, if you look in the bottom left, it's uh, redirecting to all teams. If we click on that, it's going to take us to that uh, controller. There we are, a list of all the teams alphabetically. And each one of those links is pointing to the uh, a view page for each team. So what we're going to do is we're just going to scaffold um, the uh, the view page for each of these teams because it, it'll crash out if uh, we click on that right at the moment because we haven't built it yet. So what we need to do is we need to create a, a new page called view, new scaffolded item, an MVC5 view add. We're going to call it view. It's going to be a details template and the template type is going to be of type team. But are we going the right way around this? Because there is no link between um, the team and the uh, and the actual match reports. But again, we do want the information for this team back from the uh, from the database. So we could create this as a scaffold uh, as a scaffolded page, and I think probably that's the best the best way to do it, just for kind of the the ease of creating it. So if we do that. We're going to make some modifications because we don't actually want any edit boxes or anything like that because this is a view page. We just want to show like the information about the team. So all we need is the uh, the team name showing on the page. So this should be changed to an H1 tag, and we should just say because it's strongly typed as a team model, we can just say model dot team name. And we can get rid of all of this because we simply don't need it. Right, so if we go to the Teams controller, we need obviously a view method um, so we can actually get to that, uh, to, that, to that team. But in order to get this strongly, team, uh, this strongly typed team back, we need to know which team it is. So what we're going to do in this controller method is what we did in the, uh, the match reports one. Um, if I click on view, you can see it's got an int ID in the uh, in the as like a parameter. So we can, if you if we go back to the actual thing, you can see if we hover over, we've got Teams view four. So in actual fact, it's already set up. The ID is being passed through. So what we need to do is, if we just study this uh, page here, we can see the match repository is being uh, like it's been created, and then we're just seeing if there is a report from get all reports where the ID matches the one that we've passed into the uh, the method supply the first one and if it if it does exist it's actually showing that uh, report otherwise it's redirecting back to the home page so we can pretty much lift this out as well and put it into our into our team controller so we'll just copy and paste it and just change it for our purposes so we want teams repository and we want to just change that to match um rep and we want specific team. So if team from get all teams, oops, where ID equals ID. So we don't need to change any of that because again we're we're sending the ID into this. Um, if the team is not null, then we will return the view of type team using whatever we've gotten back from our database. Otherwise, redirect to the uh, page. So if I run that now, press an F5. Build started. Build succeeded. And now it's ready. So if I just refresh this page, <coughs> and then if, if I click through, if I wanted to view Leicester City, um, it should just take me to the actual page. And all it'll show is Leicester City at the top because obviously in our view, um, 
oops, in our view, all we've got is the uh, the team name. So all I want to do really, if we go back to GitHub, is I want to create a team page with all of their match results, with links to the match report pages. So how, how best am I going to do that? I mean, I could do sort of one column showing uh, the home and away matches or I could have a column here which says home and away matches I think that's what I, that's better because then it kind of gives the user a little bit of uh, sort of clarity of uh, of how of how where uh, well it, it'll enable them to find the matches easier so what we're going to do is we're just going to go into uh, we're going to create these columns first so let's just create um, div class equals call um, call 50 and we'll say um, home games and we'll do the same for the away games I'll just run through these in a minute away, away games now these classes here call and call 50 they actually come from just a simple CSS thing that I set up in the uh, the content folder that's in boxes and basically these are just little uh, columns so basically call 50 is 50% and if you put them side by side you'll have two columns of 50 likewise if you wanted three columns you would maybe choose a column of 33 because it's 33% so 33, 66, 99 um, you could use a call 34 to make up the, uh, the other 1% it's just a very simple grid um, if you use something like Basecamp uh, sorry not Basecamp, uh, Bootstrap then it'll have a, another version of a grid built into it um, so you don't have to use tables you can use CSS to create columns and stuff but this is just how I have done it for this tutorial so we've got two calls of call 50 which makes a hundred percent which basically means that they're gonna be yeah uh, they're gonna be you're gonna have a column 50% wide and then another one 50% wide so actually if I refresh that page we should just be able to see the home and away columns when it finally kicks in so there we go we've got home games and away games again it needs a little bit of styling in fact let's just put that in there now it's the h2 tag that we need so we're just going to say h2 and we'll just say padding not on the top 40 pixels on the right uh, 10 pixels below it and 40 pixels on the left because if you remember it goes around like clockwise I don't know which way my fingers going on the video but you think clockwise so it's top right bottom left and now if we refresh that page you can see it's kind of been brought into line with that so it looks a little bit better um, in fact let's make it a little bit bigger font size 2.0 EM there we go it's a little bit bigger so what we need is we need a list of all of the home games and maybe the the date of the match and the away games as well so what we're actually going to do is we're just going to do two lists of match reports um, because we're not really interested in any games that have been played we're interested in the uh, the actual match reports themselves and if a match report hasn't been created then we don't really care about having it in the list so we're going to list the match reports rather than the matches themselves um, so what we need to do is we need to pop into our controller just close all these down it's going to be the teams controller because remember we're working on view view that one so we got our team um, so we're now in this condition of this uh, this if statement oops just stop this from running so we're now in this condition where we would return a view and because we're returning a team we're actually able to say um, model.team and we can we've got a team name so what we need in here is we need a list of all the, uh, the home games and then in here we need a list of uh, all the away games so what we're going to do is we're going to grab all those out of the database and the way we do that is we will just um, initialize a copy of our match reports repository match reports repository uh, match rep oops and we can say um, first of all we want to get all the games back that uh, this team's played all the matches reports that have been written so what we can do is we can say var all reports equals match report rep dot get all reports and what we'll say is where um, the match dot home team equals ID or that's what those um, characters that's what those characters uh, stand for we can say ok dot match dot away team ID equals um, 
ID as well. So that's basically going to get all the matches, the match reports back from the database, where either the home team or the away team matches the ID that we're looking for. So basically, it matches the team that we're looking for. So then we need to separate them off. So we can do something similar. We can actually say, because we only want to touch the database once, we get all our reports back, and that's actually stored. So we can say, um, all home games equals all reports dot where the ID equals um, the home team. And equally, we can set another one up with exactly the same thing all away games oops forgot that bit off the end oops no I didn't right so no that's wrong that that's completely wrong ignore me going well this isn't it so I'll just copy and paste that over the top so hopefully you can see what's going on there basically we can say right so we're getting all of the uh, the reports for this particular team based on the ID so whether it's the home team or the uh, the where team, and then we're separating it up, saying view data. We're saying all home games is all of those reports where it's the home team ID is the same as the ID that we're looking for, or all of the away games is uh, from all of those reports where the away team ID matches our current ID. And then all we need to do is we just need to check to see um, if all home games dot count is greater than zero. View data. Home games. Oops. Equals all home games. And we can do the same for about um, th for the away game. Sorry. If all away games dot count is greater than zero, so we we'll set away games equals all away. Oops. All away games. And then we'll just return the view. So basically we're just getting a list of all the uh, the home games and away games from all of the games that we've participated in. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to I'm going to order these in descending order by date by the date of the match. So hopefully you can see what's going on there. Basically we're we're getting all the reports where either the home team ID matches our ID or the away team ID matches the ID. And then we're just ordering them by the timestamp of the match. And that'll affect these queries as well because they're already ordered. So we're just stripping the ones out that we need um, based on whether we're getting the home team or the away team IDs. So And then we're storing them in these view data things called view data home games and view data away games and they are actually match reports remember they're all coming from the match report repository and uh, that's basically you can see in there if I hover over you can see that's of type I enumerable match report so when we go into the view we can say um, we remember we need to uh, specify the using part so using final whistle dot models so it knows about the models folder what we can do is we can say if view data home games is not null, else else it is. If we put that, if if we get to else, we can say there are no home match reports for this team. But if there are, we can lo just loop through them. So for each, oops, um, match report are in. And now we'll just uh, well we'll just write them out. Oops, in the bracket there. Um, R dot. Well, we'll see. How this one was. Uh, in fact, we could just write it out in the format. We could say versus Man City or versus Man United. But actually, what we'll do is we'll write out the uh, we'll write out the um, the scores. 
uh, basically and what we'll say is so we'll say um, we'll put this in couple of letters on this side um, model dot team name um, to uppercase because this is obviously us verse and we'll put the we we'll put the score in as well so let's say um, r dot home um, sorry match dot home home goals versus r dot match one dot away goals and we want the name of the uh, team that we were actually playing um, which was r dot match dot away team name and let's put in brackets r dot match dot timestamp so we can see what's going on there we can basically see we're writing out the name of the team that we're currently on the model we can as we're looping through these uh, the list of um, these match reports we can say right in this match report we'll list out the home goals the the the, the goals that we scored we can say how many goals the uh, the other team scored the name of the other team and the timestamp of the uh, of the actual match so if i was to run that now we would have one of these columns filled in And this should show all of the home girls, the games that Leicester have uh, participated in, if they actually have. I can't remember if we put any data in the database. So there we go, it was Leicester City 2 versus Man City on that specific date there. Um, maybe that doesn't look very nice, so what we can do is we'll, we'll just put a, uh, a break in there. So it drops onto uh, the next line, and really, what we need to do is we m we need to make this uh, into a link to the uh, to the match report. But firstly, in fact, yeah, let's do that now. So what we need to do is we need to uh, create a link. We'll just uh, we'll make sure this is going to be turned into a link by putting that at the end there. Refresh the page. And this top bit should turn into a link not going anywhere at the moment just waiting for the internet to kick in unfortunately it's a little bit slow sometimes so there we are, we've got a link but it's not actually pointing to anywhere yet um, so what we need to do is we need to just adjust the uh, this here, we want to go to a match report remember so match reports view r.id and if we refresh that page again that link should now be pointing to the match report between Leicester City and Manchester United on the 16th of the 9th. So let's click through. There we go. 16th of the 9th, Leicester v Man United. Um, again, we can go back to all teams. Let's look at the Tottenham um, matches. Nice result. 5-0 versus uh, Newcastle United. And if we wanted to do the away games as well, we don't even need to refresh the page. We, uh, we don't even need to do anything to the controller. All we need to do is copy and paste this into the away games section change this to away games and again that one but let's change it around here because we want our, our current team to uh, to the end really we need to swap this around because remember it would be when it, when you're away your team name displays um, as the second team so what we would just do is just cut that get rid of that versus and just put it in here instead versus Tottenham we probably want the goals across here before the uh, the name Refre so if we refresh that page that should be showing any away matches or saying there are no away matches yeah, there are no away match reports for this team so we haven't played any away games um, if we are Tottenham Hotspur let's find one it has there we go, Newcastle 5-2 uh, Ooh, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong What's going on here? Newcastle have played Man United Ah, you know what I've done there da, 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 da. That one needs to be changed to the home team name And the home goals Remember that, because that's like in the reverse to what's displaying up there So we've got home goals versus away goals this one we want uh, got that in completely the wrong order <laughs> so we've got home goals versus away goals 
There we go. So if we refresh that, that should show a 5 0 to uh, Tottenham. There you go. Tottenham Hotspur 5 versus Newcastle United with 0. Newcastle 5, Sunderland 2. We can click through to any of their matches. So this is our team page. This is this is like basically all of the uh, away games that they'll play. If there are more, they'll just display further and further down the page. Let's see if we've got any in. I can't remember. Man United. Maybe the yeah, they've got two home games played. That one. So we can we can just basically click through to any any match game we want. And again we've got them in our list here. Stoke City, lots of away games. And uh so that's that part done. So we, what we want is a team versus team history page now. So how are we going to do that? Um, let's have a think about this. I hadn't planned this. Um, this was just kind of an idea that I had. So it seems to me that if we're selecting a team, we might actually want to... Uh, so if we, if we click on Tottenham... What we want to be able to do is um, select a team from here to view all all games versus like one of the other teams on the game. So we could actually add a third column here to allow us to select a different team. So what we need is a list of the a, a list of all of the teams to display down this uh, this column. So first thing that we're going to do really is go to our view, and we're going to change this to uh, a 33, a 33. And we'll get another one in there, just above this clear tag. Oops. I may have uh, screwed that up a little bit. Call 33, call 33, and call 33. And then here we'll say, or choose a team. And then we'll put a list of teams down here. So if I refresh that page, that should be three columns now. So we can see all the games for Tottenham. We can see all the home games, all the away games, or selected teams. So let's get a list of all the teams we could choose from if we want to kind of uh, filter versus uh, a specific uh, versus a specific team. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, so what we need to do is, in our controller, in our view, we've already got the teams repository. So what we need to do is we need to just say var all teams equals teams rep dot get all teams. Order by the team name. Um, if all teams dot count greater than zero, view data all teams equals all teams. So basically if there are any teams found then we'll dump it in this uh, this view data of type teams of type team sorry coming from the teams repository and then we can go into our view and say um, if view data all teams is not null else there are no teams, which would never happen really because, uh, although that's a good point, um, what we need to do is, when we're getting all the teams back, we don't want the current team because we don't want to list, we don't want to be able to click Tottenham on the Tottenham page because we, there's never going to be any games where we're versus ourselves. So we could put dot where ID is not equal to the current ID. So now we'll just get a list of teams excluding the one that currently has uh, that ID that we're specifying. Um, so again, let's go back to here. If the all teams is not null, then we need to list them out. So um, for each team T in I numerable of type team, view data t all teams. dot name. So now, if I run that, we should just have a list of all of the other teams. There we go. So this is a list of all the teams possible to uh, to select. 
that are currently in the system. And you'll notice on the Tottenham page, we have no Tottenham. If I go to all teams and click, say, Sunderland, Tottenham's in the list, but Sunderland isn't it. So that's completely dynamic. Um, it's showing all of the teams in the system that aren't the current team. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new link on these so that it'll only display the home and away matches between uh, Sunderland and uh, Leicester. Um, there's many ways we could do this. Um, I'm going to go for using a filter which we're going to add as, a, as what's called a query string value. So we should be able to put um, something like opponent 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 equals Sunderland or whatever but it would be the ID so it'd be like three um, so the way to do that is let's just let's just set that up so we'll just say um, a new link and teams view model dot ID and we'll add a query string called opponent equals T dot ID and we'll just close that link off. So if I refresh that page, let's just look at the link that gets generated. Not that link. <laughs> yeah, Trev. Da, 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 da. Oh, I haven't put the bracket in. That should sort that. There we go. Right. So we've got links to the opponents, but it's actually pointing to the same view. It's if we look at the bottom left, it's saying teams view four opponent equals seven so it's saying right I still want to point to the Sunderland page but my opponent is number seven which is Leicester City or my opponent is eight which is Liverpool or my opponent is two Man United etc etc so if there have been any matches between sort of Tottenham and Sunderland clicking on this link should actually filter this list by all of the yeah uh, by, by just the Tottenham and uh, and the um, and the current team but it won't at the moment because we haven't actually set that up. So you'll notice that query string value where it says opponent equals one or whatever. Now what we can do is we can say, right, let's go into our controller, teams controller. In our view, we can say at the top, we will say, let's make some space. If request dot query string opponent is not null. Oops. We can say, right, because I've already opened this all teams thing, I can say, right, we, we're being asked here for a specific opponent. So I can say, var opponent equals all teams dot where dot id to string, let's convert that to a string, equals request dot query string. opponent to string dot first or default if opponent is not null then let's store it equals opponent Or should we do that at the bottom? Let's just cut that at the bottom so we can do an operation on all of the... Uh, now let me think about this. Let me think about this. Because what we're going to do is we're going to... If if an opponent exists, um, we're going to filter these away teams as well. Yeah, let's put it at the bottom. Do, 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 do. Let's put it in here. So right now we're in between. We're getting all of the reports back which have Sunderland in them. And just before we we specify the home games and the away games, um, what we want to do is we actually want to filter this all reports um, if there is indeed an opponent, so that. All of the reports that don't have the uh, the opponent that we want to filter by are stripped out, and then that'll affect the home games and the um, away games. So, if we reach this point, if there is an opponent, we're we're not only storing the opponent name in here, we are going to filter the all reports to say all reports 
equals all reports dot where I oops um, where the match dot home ID equals opponent dot ID or the match dot away team ID equals dot ID so if oops let's see what's it in cannot uh, oh we need to convert it to a list no we don't what's going on here um, What is going on here? What's it saying? <laughs> ah, right. Um, we need to also add the ordered thing at the end here. That's better. It was currently expecting that we were going to be supplying an order list, um, so we're just basically ordering it again. Um, so what we're doing here is we're we're saying right, if an opponent has been specified, um, then we need to make a record of it by storing it in the view data, and we need to filter all of the reports that we're getting back featuring the current team by the ones which contain the actual opponent. Um, so we're not actually have to, having to create a, a, a new view here, but what we are is we're just adding a new aspect to it so that we can actually filter the results based on an opponent. Um, so now all of, if we reach this part, all of the reports will only contain those reports that contain either the uh, the home uh, uh, they'll contain either reports that contain the home team as being the opponent or the away team as being the opponent. Um, so no 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 other matches uh, will be included, and again that will affect the whole the home games and all the away games as well w that we've already done. So the only thing to do now is if we if this exists, we need to display it on the page so that the the user knows that the results are being filtered. So what we can do is we can say we can go back to where it says up at the top it says Sunderland. Now what we can do is we can say we can change that we can say if view data opponent is not null else so I'll just run you through what's happening here god what is wrong with my keyboard Right. So if the view if the opponent is not null, we need to write it out as well as the uh, team. So we could say right, I want model dot team name versus view data opponent. Oops, I need that on a uh, on a bracket. So what that's going to do is if the view data is not null, then we want to uh, display the string value of uh, why is that not coming in there? Maybe we have to write that out as HTML. Dot raw. God, this is uh, annoying. I'll do it in a different way. I can't remember. Versus. Why is that doing that? Is that going to work? Right, hopefully that'll work. Anyway, so basically, if the opponent is not null, then we need to write out the name of the uh, the model, the team name, and uh, ah, you see, that's why this this is not going to work because we're actually we're storing the opponent. And what we actually need is the opponent dot name. So we'll change the name of that. That was nearly that nearly caught me out. We need to. Uh, 
adjust that so that um, well it makes it a little bit clearer for our purposes as well but basically if the opponent team name is not null we'll write it out after the name of the team that we've currently picked so Sunderland versus opponent um, or we will just say model dot team name and what that does is that'll just either choose between if we have selected an opponent we will show the the name of the the team that we're looking into versus that specific opponent otherwise we'll just display the uh, the team name so if i run that hopefully it'll be uh, clear because i went a little bit around the houses there um sorry about that but again this is unplanned and i'm kind of figuring out as we go hopefully you can see what's going on so if i refresh that page nothing should change but if I want to view any games versus, that was Sunderland versus Newcastle United, oops, I need that in an H1 tag. <laughs> oh man, this is not going very well. Never mind. But you can see it did work. So you can see where we've got no home games showing up. You see, because we've actually added the uh, the opponent. Um, so we're, we've got Sunderland versus Newcastle United. It still knows that we're looking at the Sunderland page, but what if we wanted Liverpool matches? No home games, no away matches. Did we play Stoke? Yep, there was a home game there. Um, were there any against Leicester? Nope. Newcastle? Yep. Stoke? Yep. Against Spurs? Nope. But what if we wanted a different team? We want to view Newcastle's matches. So did they did they ever play Leicester? Nope. Did they play Liverpool? Did they play Man United? Or Stoke? Or Sunderland? Yes they did. Did they play Spurs? Yes they did. And it was a beauty of a game for Spurs fans. So you see we've actually added a filter there. But what if we wanted to just view all the matches again because it's it's a little bit sort of cumbersome. Um, well what we can do is the easiest way to do that is to just if this condition here gets um, gets instigated we could just say teams view and then model.id so that's basically a link back to where uh, to the um to the page to the model page there we go teams view model.id so if i if i'm viewing a filter here manchester united Let's just put a space in, just so we can see what's going on. Verse. So you see, I've created a link there, which is actually a link back to the uh, the main model, the main team page. Which, if you look at the bottom left, it doesn't have an opponent. You can see in the in the address bar, we've actually got an opponent of two, which is Manchester United. So we can just click that. No opponent, so it shows all of the games. But again, if I want to filter it by Newcastle matches against Stoke, then pretty much uh, that's that's how that's how that's how it works nice and dynamic i can view all the matches for all teams for for tottenham hotspur um the tottenham ones versus newcastle united and again there was only one game that went on against man united you can see our columns are getting updated so we've got a dynamic website all good let's view manchester united because they played quite a few games so i could see any that they've played against stoke I could see the one that they've played against Leicester. So that's how we create a nice dynamic website. So that's one cool thing you can do with the data. Remember we haven't added any more data than what we entered a couple of videos ago. Now we're just basically using it so that we can improve the functionality of the website for the uh, users. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, probably arguably the coolest part which is uh, the league table which will base it, it'll be based on all of the teams that we've entered, all of the matches that have taken place and the scores of those matches. and. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in the next one. If you enjoy the video, despite it being so long-winded at times, um, like I say, I am working this out on the fly. I've done no planning. I'm just trying to basically show you how you would sort of debug and find your way through creating an application. And uh, But hopefully, if you are enjoying it, you wouldn't mind giving it a thumbs up and uh, subscribing to the channel if you if you aren't already. So I will see you in the next one, where, again, we'll, uh, we'll learn how to create a league table. And uh, look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching. Cheers.